Gearwebsites.com is your source for firearms-based playing cards and books. We also have mugs, shirts, and posters with designs that we've made live. Of course, we have patches. Every Friday is Free Patch Friday. We appreciate your support. Thank you for shopping at Gearwebsites.com. at Radio Free America, and this is Uncle Sam with music and the truth until dawn. Right now, I've got a few words for some of our brothers and sisters in the occupied zone. The chair is against the wall. The chair is against the wall. John has a long mustache. John has a long mustache. It's 12 o'clock, Americans, another day closer to victory. And for all of you out there on or behind the lines, this is your song. <laughs> I don't know why I decided to start drinking right then. All right. Well, welcome, everybody, to the weekly wrap-up. Every Friday evening, we go live and focus on the, or feature the things that focus on what our Second Amendment protects. Uh, mostly YouTube, because that's where I spend most of my time looking at stuff. But we do look at Instagram and find quite a few things that happened over there, as well as other platforms when there's things posted there. I might actually start looking at Twitter because I know some people over there and uh, maybe I won't. I don't know. So let's dig in. So uh, if we look down or if we're looking at the screen here, if you're joining us live, uh, then got a couple of things happening here over on the left. We usually leave about a quarter to a third of the screen for the live conversation. So thanks to the people that show up and participate in the live part of the show. That's what it's all about. Or at least that's one of the things I enjoy about the YouTube. Had a lot of fun with that over the years. We have a poll going over on the YouTube live chat. So the poll we start off with each week is, how was this week for 2A, in your opinion? Is it a great week? Was it a good week? Was it an okay week? Or something else? Let us know in the poll, and feel free to leave some comments about that. Uh, questions, comments, concerns, that's what the comments section is for. If you want to uh, contribute to what we're talking about, feel free. Uh, any corrections, I'm going to be asking for corrections here as we get into the beginning portion here. And uh, we'll get underway. First off, let's say thanks to Kingpin for showing up, being the first one to say hey. Woods is out there and C&T. So thanks, everybody, for showing up live. If more people show up, feel free to say hey. So what we're looking at is the video itself, and I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. We're looking at the description of the video here on YouTube. Oh, you know what, though? What was I thinking? I think I actually yeah, I put it over on Patreon early this week. So I don't always put it on Patreon before the show, but uh, this week I did. So there's a post over on Patreon. Patreon is basically our blog where we do all of our stuff and people subscribe to what we're doing. And uh, they give us a lot more uh, options when we post over there. So I can have a title and I can make things in bold. It makes it a lot easier to check it out than what you see over here on YouTube. For whatever reason, YouTube, they give us links. That's about it. So instead of heading over here to YouTube, let's go back over to Patreon just because I got some pictures and stuff in there this week. All right, so taking a look, uh, this is one of the projects we worked on. Again, thanks to the Patreons for giving us the time. There's a little banner scrolling at the bottom here that tells or that says thanks to those Patreons. And uh, started a map project last year for the Minuteman University project and the overall 2A history project that we've been working on for years. And some of the maps are visual representations of the data. Um, for example, states with uh, Second Amendment sanctuaries, states that have uh, prohibitions on any kind of gun registry, you know, the good stuff, and then some of the bad stuff. So uh, the visual representations give us a way to understand what's happening, but also give us some, hopefully some encouragement, because you can see a lot of green on those maps, and green's the good stuff. So anyway, that was an accumulation of all the maps in a poster format. So if you want to grab one of them, they're 1984. 
because of Red Dawn and all the other good movies that came out in 1984. And uh, grab one of them. We get a couple of bucks. That helps keep us going. And then you get a cool map with all these maps. A cool poster with all these maps. Anyway, I should have probably linked to it. I probably will later. Let's dig in. The first thing we'll start off with is this constitutional carry update, which is pretty cool. Um, there's been times that we've had constitutional carry in the past, and it's come in little spurts before, but never this many in one year with so much other stuff going on. So why don't we come over here and look at uh, constitutional carry. Constitutional carry will probably be... Uh, I would think it would be right towards the top here. Constitutional carry, right around carrying guns, right? So if we look not just at the map, but in this case, the data, right? We had Vermont, who never had any law against carrying. So we had other states that eventually stopped allowing carrying of firearms in public, uh, either concealed or open. Uh, so Alaska was the first in 2003 to remove the prohibitions on carrying concealed by people without a permit. And since that was successful more than seven years, Arizona in July, the end of July in 2010. So at the end of every July, I think about how long it's been since 2010. This year it'll be 12 years. No, yeah, 12 years with uh, constitutional carry. We inspired Wyoming in 2011. You're welcome. And then it wasn't until 2015. So we sat around from 2010 till 2015, constitutional carry and all over the place, being safe and responsible, no blood in the streets, nothing, lower rates of uh, violence. It was pretty awesome. In fact, it's still pretty awesome. But for five years, y'all sat around not getting constitutional carry until 2015. And then you had Kansas, Mississippi, and Maine all jump in on constitutional carry. That's interesting. I thought Maine, or I thought Mississippi was still, uh, working on that, but whatever. So then, uh, then we get a couple in 2016, West Virginia and Idaho. You get Missouri, New Hampshire, North Dakota, in 2017 so that was a spurt of three arkansas comes along by itself in 2018 but i for some reason i remember that being a bigger deal because other states got it and ghost ran around acting like he's so good because his state was the only one that got it then in 19 you get three more so another burst of three but does anybody even remember that everybody was so worried about everything else no one even remembers south dakota there's not enough people there. Oklahoma, they didn't make a big enough deal about it. And Kentucky, who also didn't make enough big deal about it. Uh, and then you get uh, 21, uh, I guess that would have been last year, where Utah, Montana, Iowa, Tennessee, Texas, and anybody made, nobody really made that big a deal about it because they were all worried about other things and they were being depressed and worrying about news of the day. But that was a spur of spurt of five states. And Texas is the only one that was, I guess, controversial. The only one that had a, a bunch of, uh, I feel like I should click edit right here because that's bugging me. Go down here and type in Ohio and then March of 2022. And that'll make Ohio the 23rd state in our data there. Okay, that's a little bit better. So uh, I need to update the map here. FYI, the map is, where'd it go? The map is already updated on here, if you'll notice, but uh, you can't see it. All right, so constitutional carry, it's come in spurts, and I didn't even remember that last year five states came on board because we were all worried about other things and not take, we were taking it all for granted in the work think about how much work that was for five states to come on board and how much work was it for them to ignore it how much work was it to have been ignored and taken for granted so that's what i'm here to do nag you about it this month this year whatever it is we got alabama already done they're done deal 120 state number 22 ohio 
Yeah, what's Tupperware never shows up in this chat, but uh, you know, we got that for him, gave it to him as a gift. Then we got what state's going to be next? At Georgia, I'm pretty sure they're sitting there at the governor, right? So give me some feedback on that. I told you to have some homework here. Make sure that this is right. Help me make sure this is right. Indiana, waiting at the governor. He's about to veto it, or roll call just the scared he's going to veto it? I don't know. Nebraska, this dude should know about that. Sitting at the governor's desk. Is that what's happening? And then we got Minnesota, which is sort of a weird thing where they've got the potential, if you call this Senator Limmer, uh, before the next Friday, it's possible that they'll give it a hearing, right? And if it gets a hearing before the end of day on March 25th, then it's at least alive. But if it doesn't get a hearing, it is dead. So constitutional carry in Minnesota has been on hold. No one has been addressing it with any sense of urgency. I'm not sure because I don't pay enough attention if it's being neglected on the national stage or not. But it is got a potential. It's a long shot. But, I mean, I feel like last year we got five states. Are we going to sit around and watch if the other states happen this year, or are we going to do something about it? So if you want to do something about it, you're sick of watching everything, it's want to do something, think about Minnesota. What's so good about Minnesota? Well, I don't know. They look like a weird – what does Minnesota look like? It doesn't look like anything. looks like a weird nothing. looks like a chunk of cheese, actually. looks like a square that somebody took a bite out of because they thought it was cheese. I'm looking at Wisconsin. Um, let's see I'll go over here. G23 is saying Isley will sign anything to do with anti firearms. I don't know who that is, doesn't say up here, so I don't know who that is. You got to say the governor, whoever. Any chance governor something won't sign? And again, you guys are, I don't know who you're talking about. All right, so I'm not an expert on this. I'm trying to keep up with it. I'm trying to put it at the top of the thing so that it can be useful. Please help me make sure that it's accurate because otherwise I'm spreading bad data. But this is the best that I've been able to come up with with the amount of time I've been able to spend on it. Again, you've seen a scroll at the bottom there. Nothing's for free, and I'm not trying to sell you nothing. Well, I'm going to try to sell you some patches here in a second. But aside from that, um, I don't care if you go buy guns. I don't care if you uh, keep buying crap all the time or if you prep. Or if you're scared, or if you're what? I just like that I'm able to work on this kind of stuff thanks to our Patreon. So thanks to people who subscribe to this. They're the people who gave me a chance to do this. And again, if you want, you can help me make sure that it's accurate. It's difficult to keep up with this stuff. It'd be awesome if I had a staff. Maybe uh, some kind of uh, intern would be good. If anybody wants to intern, let me know. All right, next up, we got some more serious stuff. Uh, Jaeger's, you know, Lily explains in the video. Uh, he's assuming he's got some issues, and he's now heading over, well, he's attempting to head over to do some instruction and to, uh, you know, to do something with the time he's got. Uh, they do a pretty good interview over on the Warrior Report, on the Warrior Poet channel. Uh, it's maybe 20 minutes. It's not very long, but it's, uh, it's real. So you can go around watching people sell you crap. People run around acting like they're not trying to sell you crap or they sell you crap. Or you can watch people sharing what they're doing uh, on the internet and doing things. Uh, and again, I'll repeat again, Jaeger is one of the best people I know. He's like literally of all the people I know, Jaeger is right up there. And we wouldn't be doing this. He keeps selling people. I helped him. But yeah, I mean, I wouldn't have got my start in in 90 in 2004 uh, whenever I was like oh firearms training what there was this range down in South Tucson oh not that far from here actually uh, it's not there anymore but it used to be a range that you shot into the airplane graveyard how cool is that like you basically shot into the airplane graveyard not really but you could if you really wanted to and uh, they had cars there and I was like what are these cars doing here I used to go down there and take pictures of the gun shop for websites because this was before the internet or before YouTube and uh, they had this car there and they used to shoot in and around that car and that's when I started asking questions and that's when I found out what firearms training was after basically not paying attention to it for a long time 
and uh, a couple of people uh, were hanging around doing that kind of thing. And tactical response was one of them. And the rest is history. We're, we're here today. Uh, and the whole time, James, is, he's not always impressed me. He's definitely been a regular human doing things, but uh, um, he's real. And there's nothing in there that's fake about what he's doing right now. Uh, so again, if you want to go pay attention to that, feel free and know that it is legit. Um, then we get locked and loaded. Look at how dropped down it got. First off, they got dropped down because this is real, right? This is getting constitutional carrying stuff. And then this other one is real. But uh, otherwise, they did uh, good. They had two shows again this week. Uh, Locked and Loaded Latino is probably the best thing you got going. If you're only going to watch one thing and you're interested in not just looking at the ground or crying about spilt milk, then uh, watch them. Uh, two ep Well, not always two episodes a week, but you often get a couple episodes uh, when they interview people. They interviewed the guy from Phoenix. I was doing something. Oh, you know what I was doing? Watching something else. I totally forgot that they were on, or at least at the time they were on. So I was either videoing something or watching something else because I was trying to do some taxes earlier this week. So uh, I missed about half of that and never went back and watched the front. So let me know if, you, if there's something wrong with the front. Otherwise, I'm going to still recommend it. Uh, let's see. Isley is the governor of Washington. Okay, thanks. Yeah, but nothing is going on in Washington that I'm aware of except for y'all getting wailed on. Nothing's going on there good, is it? Is there something good going on that I'm not aware of? I'll add it to my list. What is this boy is talking about? Good week because of the constitutional carry edition? What are you saying? You got a constitutional carry going in Washington? Am I spreading rumors here? You'll have to let me know. Use your words because there's obviously a lag, and I don't know when I'm going to get back to reading that. All right, so where were we at? After Locked and Loaded, we get to Gun Owners America, posted a thing about the 57 Republicans who allowed the garbage $1.4 trillion ugh, garbage to go through within 48 hours. So there's no excuse at this point. There's literally no excuse for people to go, oh, I'm not political. Or like, oh, I don't pay attention to that stuff. Or, oh, that's chess. I'm not, I can't keep up. I mean, come on, man. Seriously, come on, man. So here's a list of 57 Republicans, and if you're not sure what to do to, to hold politicians' feet to the fire, then maybe we should have some uh, links to some channels that deal with civic uh, uh, tools and resources, because uh, there's lots of things. This is the system that we've had for a long, long time. Uh, things change and evolve, but for the most part, their representatives are employees. They're they're there to do the will of what their constituents cons, the, the constituents ask for, and there's methods and ways that you can let them know. And when they aren't doing what you want, there's things you can do. So uh, you can sit on the sidelines, or you can be part of it. And some of it is an obligation. The obligation is the shitty part that you got to do, even though it sucks. And I'm not talking about taxes, and I'm not talking about Whatever else, I'm talking about paying attention to the garbage here and getting people motivated. Your one vote, but your voice, that First Amendment, that right to talk and publish and gather. Oh, uh, yeah, and have religion. And what's another one I'm forgetting? There's about two others I think I'm forgetting. But all of those things are places that they intended <clears throat> or that they would love, the, the bad guys would love for us to not use anymore and just default to this stuff that they can censor, regulate, filter, and whatnot. So let's not forget that uh, we got lots of opportunity out there to talk to others, people that we deal with, and then people that maybe are within our reach, right? you got ability to put up signs or attend meetings or become uh, active in some sort of, uh, thing that offers inform or offers points of view, right? But whatever, let's keep going. Uh, then you get uh, Brooke doing suicide prevention Saturday, <clears throat> and I definitely need to start putting notes in here. Every I can remember at least on a couple of these, including um, locked and loaded, where I was going to say something about 
more than just, oh, yeah, that show happened. I need to start putting in notes because I don't just put these in here because these are my friends or these people pay me or nothing. I'm putting these in there because these are the good shows. I watch a lot more shows than this. These are the things that are useful and they give you resources. DJ was on there this week, but it was still good. And there was a couple of tool uh, kernels, I would call them, a couple of um, not necessarily tools for your toolbox, but maybe a new way to use a tool. For example, I had to nail a little finish nail. I was hanging some stuff, so I was going to nail, put in some little tiny finish nails. Those are basically pieces of wire with a sharpened end. And they can be a little pain in the butt to, to nail sometimes if you kind of smash your fingers. I'm not too worried about smashing my fingers. It was more of a angle in the way that I was putting these things in. So anyway, long story short is I used a socket to hold the nail up there. And then it also became a, a kind of a gauge to let me know when I had them all in uniform depth. So sometimes thinking outside the box and using a socket, which is designed for moving nuts normally with a ratchet, you know, I used that as a little uh, cylinder uh, that was going to hold up to being smacked with a hammer a couple of times the amount it would take to tap in a little brad or a little finishing nail. So uh, thinking outside the box is uh, the kind of tips you're going to get from Brooke on Suicide Prevention Saturdays. Uh, I'm pretty sure then, wait, she's got a break coming up and then there's going to be... Um, uh, a bunch of guests. So she'll have some guests, real guests, not DJ. Uh, let's see. Then we get Light Over Heat. Professor Yamane does a series over there, and he was over. He did his last, sort of the end of season one or something episode last week, but then he did this special edition, uh, kind of retouched on this concept of chainsaws. Not so much to scold the people who wrote the the lady that wrote the article that he was referring to two weeks ago or last week. Uh, some lady had written an article saying that gun owners are weird because they call them tools. They call guns tools. But then people that own chainsaws don't buy a whole bunch of different chainsaws just because they're different colors and shapes and stuff. Is it rude to keep drinking that hot co cocoa? But... Um, the thing is, a lot of people do own a lot of different kind of chainsaws. Obviously, the idiot who wrote the article is just a stupid idiot. But uh, Doctor or Professor Yamane made a better point than just calling her an idiot by mentioning how um, sort of an example of how he's driving down the road, going somewhere that was outside his normal, uh, whatever, normal routine, I guess. And uh, there was a downed tree in the road. And before he could get to his phone to call the city, uh, some other regular person had already pulled out a chainsaw and chopped the tree out of the way. And then they were on their way. And he was amazed by that. So there's people out there that don't realize you don't call the, the state for everything or you don't call the police or you don't call, I don't know who you would even think about calling for a tree in the road, I guess the tree department or something. So yeah, there's people out there that think, hey, something happens, you call the police or hey, something happens, you call the government. And, uh, you know, I don't know, has everybody got that? I don't know, it's, it's one of those uh, points of view or, or state of the minds that, uh, I guess the people that have that state of mind don't understand that there's people out there that don't the same way that I don't always remember that there's people out there that have that state of mind or that perspective on things. So anyway, he does a much better job presenting that situation to his or to people that would be on that side, the people that would jump to the uh, state before they thought about doing anything themselves, I guess. All right. Then we get uh, rogue Banshee hanging out with Rob, but what I'm going to do is take a commercial here so that I can drink some of that coffee without being rude and hiccup a bunch of times because now I'm getting the hiccups. Here, let's do a commercial for Lock and Loader. Hello, 
everyone, and welcome to episode. All right, I probably should cut that end off of there because it's not much of a commercial if it's just their horked intro. All right, remember it's very lazy to just horks people's intros and lay them down over your own show. Super lazy, super lazy. So then we'll get into Rogue Banshee had uh, Rob on from Crit from Tusk. Uh, talking cryptocurrency um at some point people quit worrying like like as if everyone sat down and knew exactly what was happening with travelers checks and then took that acquired knowledge and and challenged paypal every time it was brought up what exactly is paypal and how does it work exactly and now they challenge every time they see a new paypal technology or or system they'll uh, they'll challenge the validity of it but uh, pretty soon people will get past this and we'll start uh, using crypto and then people have it at the gas station or something or at the uh, food store. And uh, and then they'll be like, oh, I, I use the crypto with Tusk in it. I use that Tusk, the, the Tusk currency. That's how it'll be said by the old people, the Tusk. Anyhow, Rogue tries to uh, let give Rob another option or opportunity to explain it. And uh, they're getting better. I mean, I'm not uh, saying I understand it technically, but I get the gist of it enough to understand that we're not being smart by waiting around. But uh, I can also tell that it's taken a while for everybody to get up to speed and for Rob to figure out the way to, to get it across to folks. Because there's so many folks to get it across to. There's not one message, obviously. So it's been cool to kind of watch Rob's message develop here over the different interviews he's done. We'll continue to follow that and add to it, hopefully, offer some some explanatory stuff here coming up. Let's get some time to do it. All right, next up is Crump. Crump had, oh, I could have put Crump's video game thing right here. I'm going to go in and add the video game or the gun game image he sent it to me. So the gun game was something kind of neat. It was sort of a bracket situation. That Crump came up with, came up with. He did it live. He had Night Strike on there and Rich, and they uh, just used a bracket system to evaluate a whole bunch of different guns from some video game. But it's just a bunch of guns. And it was pretty fun. Just sit there and kind of do whatnot. It actually worked out really well for me. I had just finished doing some tax work and was not interested in doing anything like that anymore. I flipped on YouTube and there he was uh, starting that show. Just I think I caught it just as it was starting. And then uh, he invited me on, and we had a good time. I don't know, about an hour or something like that. He had a second one this week with uh, somebody else, and uh, hopefully he'll do more. It would work out pretty good. It's kind of a rip off of the tactical quiz, to be honest, but whatever. Our lawyers will get in contact as soon as it's successful. All right, speaking of lawyers, armed attorneys had a video this week. I think they go live quite a bit, or they do videos quite a bit. And this one was on... Uh, how to find a great 2A lawyer who knows gun law. And that's uh, of interest to me. So I checked that one out. I recommend checking that channel out uh, in this, not necessarily just this video, but they do quite a bit of uh, Q&A, short videos to address the typical questions. And unlike a lot of the places out there that are like, hey, you want to answer to a pretty straightforward question? Let's talk about coffee or let's talk about buying some crap or let's talk about joining something, right? So they don't do a lot of that. It's their attorney, so they've loaded. They're already super rich. So they just go straight to sending you out info, which is pretty cool. All right, so next up, what's all this about? To answer your question, DJ. No, Isley will sign it. It was written by somebody else. I don't know what they're talking about. Does anyone else salsa dance to the locked and loaded intro? I will now. All right, so next up is a little map I created for the map thing that we talked about earlier. If you look right there, boom, that's the riding shotgun with Charlie map. Horked it off of his map that he used in the, uh, oh, you're talking about this one. Um, so this is a map I horked off of a metal map that Charlie has created to archive his journey on the tour. So, uh, or what does he call it? The shotgun, what does he call it? The trail. I think he calls it the stagecoach trail or something like he for some reason he doesn't call it the tour. All right. So then we get a video of gunsight. 
I should probably click on these videos more often. So I probably I don't know if I get in trouble for showing these things. But basically, this is uh, Gunsight, which is Cooper, Jeff Cooper, who created the first actual school open to the public, military and police. It's in Arizona, as you can see from the photographs. It's in, not the middle of nowhere. It's basically between, uh, it's in Prescott. So it's between Phoenix and uh, Flagstaff. So if you look at Arizona and you drew a line where Nevada would go straight across and then use that distance to go to the east, then it would be right there. So it's basically in Prescott. And uh, it's a big area, a lot of acreage, lots of ranges. Uh, there's lots of facilities there for students, and because it's kind of remote, I think there must, is there places for students to stay? There must be, but there's definitely lots of resources there, lots of lots of places to go, or I mean lots of uh, places for, for courses to be, uh, for lots of ranges for courses to use, and uh, everything from like fuselages for airplanes to a couple of different shoot houses to distance, lots of cool stuff. And, you know, it's all kind of been developed over the years, but for a long time, Jeff Cooper was there and he started the four safety rules. He started, um, well, quite a few things, including fast draw and uh, IDPA and competition shooting for practical versus um, just marksmanship type of skills. Um, all right, so then uh, that was, Gun site posted that. They don't have a lot of subscribers. They don't post a lot of videos, so that was kind of unusual. I found the new channel, Jenny nine, nine or Jenny J nineteen eleven. Anybody heard of this channel? Four hundred subs. Uh, she's a fifth grade teacher. Fifth grade teacher, and she also is making like reloading videos. Where's one of the reloaders? Is one of the reloaders in here? No, they're all out reloading right now. But uh, pretty cool channel. And she did this video on a bunch of flags that she has that are all these weird, well, all the flags before the United States flags. So all the like stuff that was before the United States. Basically all the flags that Alan Anchor makes little tiny ranger eyes for. So that might be a good compliment to an Alan Anchor video. Uh, let's see. Then we get the Williams Family Museum the newest and one of the coolest museums out there, the Northern Nevada. See, I figured. Uh, up in Northern Nevada, does a cool video on the model 1885, model 1886. That's the first model that Browning, that's the first patent that Browning sold to Winchester, the 1885, which is, if you watch the video, you know, and then if you uh, watch the video, you know what the 1886 is. That's the second patent patent that Browning sold to Winchester, the beginning of a long and lucrative career for both of them. So uh, the Winchester or the uh, Williams family is a cool family collection that's now a museum. I don't I think it's open to the public. It, it's open to people if you're not a jerk, I imagine, but it's not I don't know if it's necessarily open with business hours. But uh, they've definitely had it open to tours and groups, uh, kids, um, vets and stuff like that. And, um, you know, civic groups, youth groups, I'm sure. And uh, now they're doing these, they're sharing the collection and the museum and these stories, these little insights using the, the items in the collection as visual aids. Uh, and it's fun. It's great. So uh, short video, 11 minutes or something. Uh, straight to the point, you know, three to hold giant book. You get these little uh, slices of what's going on in the museum and uh, little pieces of history. So cool stuff. All right, then you get into some of our stuff, I guess. What's going on here? New editions. So somehow I, gra I must have just not realized I jammed one of ours up in here. So this is one of ours. Uh, I went live earlier in the week just because uh, I should have done this earlier in the year. But uh, just to go live and ex do a thought experiment to see if it's possible to get to every Second Amendment event all year long. And like physically, like, you know, can you get to them all? 
uh, are there ones that are happening on the same weekend, for example, close enough to each other that you could attend both? And then, well, that's mainly the main thing, is that there's not like more than one event happening on the same weekend. And you can't really. There's a couple of things that happen on consecutive weekends on the other side of the country from each other. And there's a couple of things that just make no sense, like Blade Show is in Atlanta, and then you got to go to Nebraska, and then you got to go back to Texas. So it's just very, very, very difficult to get to all of them. However, we did list them all. That was really the goal. So we listed them in that video. We took the information from that video and listed it all over the place. So uh, our goal is to make it easier for folks who are uh, either not traveling, but just maybe not aware of something that's happening near them, uh, or somebody that might be traveling to be aware of the things that happen out there. So if you're able to intentionally or accidentally, you know, find out that something coincides, then definitely you want to attend the a giant gun show. You want to attend a, an outdoor um, shooting exposition or full auto event. If there's a uh, you know, something happened in, in a town or, um, you know, an hour drive from where you're planning to be, or you can move a trip easily from one weekend to another, ideally like a business trip or something, um, then why not uh, spread the word on that? Uh, our other goal, of course, is almost always to create more links to these places, to these things, to these events. Uh, on the internet. So again, we're going to post them here. We're going to post them on other websites. We're going to host them on other social platforms. Uh, we're going to schedule things that happen that'll pop up days or hours before these events. And all of those hope or all of those add to be drops in the flood, right? All of those uh, contribute to make the in events and the uh, uh, locations where the events are being held more readily available on the internet. At least that would be the goal. So uh, feel free to use that info. Thanks to our patrons for giving us the time to consolidate that data. Uh, not very many people do that. And then uh, you know, we encourage you to take that data and share it. Uh, let folks know. Put it in newsletters, that kind of thing. That's the whole point is. All right. So then we had a barbecue was trying to impress everybody by doing 16 hours worth of testimony, but then he fell asleep right in the middle of it. And then he had DJ come on because he needed help. And then DJ fell asleep in the middle of it. And then he strips like most of it off. He only has 12 hours of it on YouTube. So did he really go live for 16 hours or did he just say he did? And it was only 12 hours. So I'll tell you what, I only went live for 12 hours and there's the whole 12 hours right there. Um, sure, I was horking barbecues thing the whole time. But that's irrelevant. I was also horking the actual feed. So if you want to go look and see what a bunch of people said about it, go to his. If you want to just watch what the people said about it and listen to it, go to mine. Either way, I don't care. It's a 12-hour video. It effectively destroyed both of our channels. <laughs> the way the logarithms work, uh, one of the things they look at is watch time. So when someone opens a 12-hour video, and goes, what the hell is this? And then leaves. It's it's you. It's effectively destroying any watch time for the channel. So you're welcome. Thanks again to the Patreons who make it so I don't have to worry about the fact that I destroy the channel. It's sort of like getting a battleship and carrying another battleship on it and getting your one battleship all ruined. But hey, if we got the other battleship where it needs to be, that's what it's all about. Uh, the other battleship wasn't barbecue in that, by the way. Barbecue is some kind of little tugboat taking credit for what all the battleships are doing. Uh, let's see. Next up would be Yankee, not a battleship. Uh, shooting left center. He does that every other once in a while and has me and Matt on. I think he has Matt on all the time. He has me on every once in a while, and I link to it. It's always a lot of fun. We've been chatting since 10. We've been chatting for 12 years, and now pretty much that's the only time we do it every other week. But, heck, that's a lot more often than a lot of other people that have been friends for 12 years get together. So it's pretty cool. Glad he's doing it and to see what his audience is up to. Um, next up is Ask Gun Questions. We always go live on Saturdays for the last, last 12 weeks or so. Continue to do it if we keep getting good feedback on it. 
and we answer gun questions. We have a website called Ask Gun Questions. It looks like that. You can type in a uh, question, and then it goes to a database. We look at the database on Saturdays, and we answer the questions. You're getting your questions answered by, well, me and other people I invite, which are lifetime gun owners. So none of this like, oh, I like the grip angle, or like, eh, it seems like I've seen good video reviews about this. None of that kind of garbage, petty review type of garbage advice. This is real advice from people who know all about everything from metal guns and aluminum guns and plastic guns and now all your fancy little wrapped around and bent over guns. So legitimate, authentic answers to real questions. And half the time I don't know the answers to them because it's about stuff I don't know. But the stuff I do know, it's authentic and real. So join us tomorrow. It's going to be a normal one. And then I think we will do another one focused on Tusk and Cybers coins or something coming up in the future, maybe in a couple of weeks, uh, if Rob's free on a Saturday. Because we did one, I guess I have a link to it somewhere in here. We did one focused on, well, I guess that's what this one is, focused on CCW insurance. And I think that worked out all right. So uh, we'll do one focused on Cyber to, again, get the people over the hump get them past their little glitches so that we can start using some other types of currency and get our community a bit stronger financially. All right, then let's see what else we got. We went live on Sunday, or was that, I don't remember what day it was, but basically uh, I've been cleaning out a bunch of bushes in the backyard and I got all these pieces of wood and I got to burn them up. So I put them in my little fire fireplace thing, turn on the camera and we go live. And throw the link out to Patreons and channel members. You can join the YouTube channel. You can join the Patreon. That's what we're on over here. I think it'll tell you up here. We have about 100, 151 Patreons. We must have got a new Patreon. So thank you for that. We were at 150 uh, just the other day. So uh, people that subscribe to what we're doing, every once in a while we'll throw out a link like that. And just go live and BS a little bit. Uh, let's see. Then yesterday... This morning, it was this morning, did a video on building the 2A library. That one has been kicking around in StreamYard since last year. And I keep kicking it down the curb and kicking it down the curb. And I had some time today and I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to kick that thing down the curb no more. So we went live. Uh, I went through this little deck of cards thing I made up to uh, hold an entire 2A library. It's old, so I definitely realized that it's been a couple years now, four years almost, since I built that thing. So there has been new books written, and I miss books somehow. I actually miss books in that list. So um, essay from Foss fame, who Foss brings on his overnight shows, talk about Washington laws. I say, I can't say her name right, so I say Heincliffe, Heincliffe, whatever. Uh, the channel is, she was saying about how she was going to compare the libraries, and I mentioned having some sort of a conversation about 2A library books, or 2A books with her. So that's cool. Uh, let's see. And then uh, I also have a deck for the Kalashnikov library, and pretty happy with my Kalashnikov library. It's fun to uh, dig into something. That's what I've been collecting and instead of bayonets for a while, and uh, it was fun to be able to dig in and take a look at those. So if you're interested, check out that old video, check out the new video, and uh, yeah, that worked out pretty good. Now we're about 15 minutes to the end of the show, so we can head over to the Instagrams, and we'll go check out the poll over here. So... We had a poll. Actually, I'll let the poll go for a minute because there's some lag. I don't know how many people are out there. The numbers are not the same between Streamlab and the YouTube here. Or was this called? StreamYard and the YouTube here. So uh, what is your, or how do you, uh, what, how was this week for 2A in your opinion? Right now, we're at 50%, just a good week. Interesting. And then 20% for great week, but also 20% for bad week. How do they justify that? And then 10% for okay. 
All right, we'll go up from the comments or the bottom. In Cliff. See, I can't know what you're trying to say. So that's what I'm saying. I know it's there's a something in there. I don't know what the words are, but uh, I need to hear her say it more often, I think. Because I always just see the essay and the rest of it, I'm dyslexic. The rest of it turns into Char Charlie Brown teacher to me. Rah, 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 rah. Uh, Foss and Barron been killing it on the Washington stuff. I agree. Good stuff. The Overnight is a good show. Unfortunately, I don't think we get it this week, right? We have to wait till next week. It's kind of bullshit. They should do it every week, but whatever. Uh, let's see. Up for 30 hours before barbecues. My nap was two hours, and I ran straight through until the end. Then I crashed. Well, nobody's asking you to do all that. Sleep for eight hours. It's better for your body, and you'll get a break and give yourself a better rhythm. Or go the uh, Einstein way, 20-minute breaks, 20 minutes naps uh, every, you know, however many hours. Um, I've done that before when I was trying to get a bunch of shit done, but I don't really think, well, you do get a bunch of shit done, but I don't think it's really any good for you to do that for too long. But that's here nor there. So we'll end the vote thing over here. Did it change? No. It's still the same, so we're going to end it. Is there another poll to have? I don't know. Why don't we talk about what's happening over at the Gear website store? We have new patches in stock right now, which are the Daily Gun Show. This is our first Daily Gun Show PVC patch, so it's legit. And if you were to click on full details over here, you'll see that they glow in the dark. So these are normal color during the day, glow in the dark color at night. So uh, they're going for a low, low price of 20 bucks, 1984. That's shipped, and it's Free Patch Friday. So all kinds of cool stuff happens on Free Patch Friday, including free patches. So uh, if you want to grab something, oh, I guess I should click on that link. If you want to grab something, that supports what we're doing over here and the various projects, the servers and the software, then uh, grabbing stuff from our store is the way it's at, is where it's at. And thanks to everybody who purchases from the store. keeps us able to do our thing over here. All right, so then we're jumping over to our Instagrams and we're jumping over to the posts that we have mm, favorited, I guess you could say, over the week. So now I'm scrolling down and I'm trying to remember. This seems familiar. So I'm thinking this says it was six days ago. And if we go to here, six days ago, seven days ago. See, I knew it was this one. So we got, um, these are the, uh, on Instagram, you can heart, you can speech bubble, you can paper airplane, or you can put a little ribbon thingy. So um, these are the things that I rib ribbon thingied during the week. This one is from what used to be called Georgia Carey is now GA2A. Says they're grateful for Representative Ballinger and her like-minded colleagues in the General Assembly for their efforts to shield the 2A. Through H. Bill 1358, we can ensure a safer future for Gov Georgia families and communities. So, um, looks like uh, instead of just saying, uh, you know, here's the people we hate or we won, Georgia is saying Georgia state level organization posts an Instagram thanking the representatives who and her colleagues, all the representatives, but the one who's I'm assuming lead, led it by name, thanking them publicly. That's classy. It's classy, Georgia. They also did the March for 2A on March 2nd. I think Georgia's winning it. I keep putting out a poll every month to see which Second Amendment organization is getting the most, doing the most. I think it's Georgia. All right, next up is, look at how sweet this is. So that's a uh, M13 is a gunsmith up in Vegas. I've chatted with a couple of times and uh, follow. They do good work. Um, it's interesting to follow gunsmiths for a while gunsmiths had no opportunity to work on a Kalashnikov. How would they, right? Unless they were some kind of a communist, they would never have had the opportunity. And then there was some armorers 
who are probably dealing with uh, captured and stolen, I guess, uh, firearms. And those might have been like scientists and, and engineers to take them apart and figure them out and then to discover, you know, how to mess with them and whatever. And then uh, you probably had a couple of uh, individual collectors and things. And then, you know, by the time you get enough collectors, you get a couple of them that are engineer-ish or engineers themselves. And they're going to backwards engineer the thing. So it takes a little while before, in this country, we're even aware of this stuff. And then it takes a while before we can get our hands on any of this stuff. And then it takes a while before we can get our hands on furniture. And even then, we would take a while before we knew what to dress them up like. You know, how do we know what furniture was appropriate? So all of these different levels uh, of evolution of our awareness and availability of the Kalashnikov led to uh, awareness and, like, skill of the, let's call them gunsmiths, right? The people that were manufacturing or repairing these things, assembling them from back from parts kits. And that's when I sort of got into the scene. That would have been, you know, the end of the assault weapons ban. You had imported parts kits coming in. You had the Mahdi's and you had the Valmets and you had the Chinese and you had all that pre ban stuff that was out there and nobody wanted it. It was so cheap and it was a lot of single narrow mag stuff. You had stuff that was wrong, like the no dimples and, and the pumps and you just had weird stuff. And and people were horking all that stuff around and changing out things and sacrificing things and, and changing out parts. And then that was a whole skill set of gunsmithing. And you only had as much experience as you had parts kits. And there was a lot of parts kits and they were inexpensive. I can go on and on. Then you had individual boutique manufacturers, the ones that the Grim Reaper never talked about. And the Grim Reaper book never covered. And that's when you have an explosion in diversity and fluctuation in quote unquote built AKs. And then you had all the home built ones being made at the same time. And you had forums and you didn't have any videos yet. The internet wasn't quite high speed yet. At least it wasn't high speed everywhere. And DVDs. You know, what were we going to put with DVD? I built a DVD. Like, though you couldn't do nothing. You couldn't distribute a DVD. AGI had the only DVD, and it, they didn't know what they were doing. They were gunsmiths, not manufacturers. So you got people, engineers, backward engineering, something that had been mass-produced by one of the largest entities on the planet with facilities that were produced with Cold War infrastructure, and they're backwards engineering them and trying to replicate it with a, you know, a harbor freight drill press or whatever. So it was pretty interesting, and I kind of figured that's where we're going to sit. You had a couple, just a couple of Kalashnikov gunsmiths, manufacturers, whatever you want to call them, who were becoming reputable and considered, what, like, experts. And then, and then recreational machine gun shooting in Las Vegas starts up in 2014, and you're shooting more rounds through a barrel than the gun is designed to shoot. I'm sorry, you shoot more guns through a gun's barrel in a month than the gun was designed to shoot. You literally need to pull barrels out of Kalashnikovs to change the barrels out. You don't just pull them out like a belt-fed tripod-mounted gun. You uh, have to take the gun apart. So you get gunsmiths that are constantly taking guns apart and putting them back together who have a level of awareness and skill that's unmatched and their detail or their attention to the detail is just, it's like any skilled craftsman. It's just a factor or a facet of their abilities. So whenever they feel like it, they're going to make uh, art and the ones that feel like it make art every single time they touch it. So what these guys are doing with, well, what M13 does with a welder and a, couple of magnets and whatever his awareness is there is nuts and this is a beautiful beautiful freaking ak right there there's a bunch of them that's the one i chose to picture though so it's just neat to see what's happening uh if you look around and don't just pay attention what the garbage news is telling you to look at uh let's see so this is a cat one from pets for vets um 
I thought it was funny, I guess, so I put it in here. This is a gun show that's happening April 30th. I don't know if I might go to it or not, but not a lot of gun shows, and it's cheap because it's in town, and I haven't been to a gun show in a while, so maybe I'll go. I don't know. Let's see. Then we get Wild Gats are the University of Arizona here in Tucson. That's our university. Uh, they have a shooting team. It's called the Wild Gats for some reason. And they got two national championships this weekend at the Collegiate National Championships and two second place finishes. So two golds and two silvers. And they say it's a challenging, it was a challenging match with temperatures in the high 20s. We live in Arizona. These little fragile kids live in Arizona where the temperatures don't get that low normally, naturally. Uh, wind and occasional rain. We don't get those things. It tested all the teams and their athletes and equipment, except for the people that cheat by living in those temperatures, which is basically cheating. Uh, we will have photos and videos after we thaw out, get some sleep, dry off our equipment, and download our memory cards. So, yeah, this is a bunch of students who go around shooting. Uh, instead of playing stupid sports, they're stupid. They're backed by Volter, which is a place here in town, which is awesome. True Blue Gun Lube, I don't know that place. Tipman Arms, which is awesome. NSSF, which is you know awesome occasionally. The Hub, which is a cool gun shop here in Tucson. Taylor Freelance, I don't know what that is. Shoot SASP, I think that's Shooting I don't know what that is. Scholastic Action Shooting Program, I think is what it is. Ruger, which has got some places in Prescott, Arizona, so maybe that's why, but otherwise that's the cooler Ruger. Written Optics. Pima Shooting Sports, which is the range I used to volunteer at. Overwatch Designs. I don't know what that is. Milo Range. I think that's just like electric guns or something. Midway USA Foundation. Marksman Pistol Institute, that's a place here in town. Freaking Laser Engraved, which I'm guessing is Laser Engravers. Leo Armory, that's a place here in Tucson that is owned by a girl who is an A-10 pilot. Just telling you. I don't know what Kinshot is or whatever that is. Glock, what? Glock is paying for collegiate uh shooting teams that don't even shoot pistols that are shooting rifles what glock is paying for that and everybody hates glock because of the grip angle and because somebody's telling you to buy some other garbage crazy cmmg apex tactical and that's it so i took a second to thank the sponsors who make it possible for our university team to go around winning i guess that's sad for the teams that lost but you could shoot better and then you would loot win Maybe because our team is pretty good, and uh, and the girl won the top one there, so they all got beat by a girl. Speaking of girls, the Connecticut Citizen Defense League has a bunch of girls from the DC Project in it, and they're the ones who are posting this. So on wait Monday, March fourteenth, did that already happen? I guess that already happened because we're doing this a week later. Uh, this was oh, I was thinking this was the dinner. This was the actual testimony thing so how many people knew about this all right i gotta drink some more co or drink some more hot chocolate here we all get in a commercial i would do a commercial for the dc project because it would be the one right thing to do except for they put a bunch of copyrighted music in their thing which is not the right thing to do so you're going to get a commercial for barbecue which is not the right thing <laughs> So here's who, who knew about this. So on Monday, when they were doing their testimony, you could go to this Nantucket event center, and then you could do your Zoom stuff there and get free pizza and drinks, and everybody brought desserts. So that's better than garbage dessert that they just provide, which is always bad. But instead, potluck dessert, which is probably like half bad, but then half of the people are going to bring real desserts. 
And that means you got a selection of real desserts, probably. Some kind of raffles and kids and family, whatnot, and guest speakers, a big deal. But basically pizza, dessert, and you could go hang out and do your Zoom meeting from the place. So that means that a bunch of those people that I thought were at work were actually at this place hanging out together and having a good time. So I feel duped, I feel like a sucker, but I also feel like that's good because a bunch of people had fun doing that stuff instead of uh, being miserable. I don't think Texas had anything cool. Well, Texas didn't have to, they had to go to their place in Austin, I guess. Anyway, this is pretty cool. They're also doing some kind of a meet and greet. I think I'll, maybe we'll click on that in a minute here. I thought this was pretty funny. I was lonely till I glued a cup of coffee to my car and now everybody waves at me. I thought that was pretty funny. It's kind of like a dad joke. This is from Pi Day. So Monday was 315. So that made it, no, whatever day 314 was, was Pi Day. And this is looking up at the, up the silo of the Titan II. So that's a 40 kiloton, no, 40 megaton intercontinental ballistic missile and uh, the sky into which it's aimed and then a radius and diameter and the circumference there. That was the uh, Banshee Heaven Tuscan. I thought this one was pretty good. This one is from Taylor uh, Defense Training Group. And uh, if you can read it, then you get the point of the whole thing. This is from Holly Sullivan, a little fancy Glock and a uh, matching DC project notebook, I guess, or planner maybe. Pretty classy looking. This is Rebecca Schmoy from Kansas. And I guess she was heading to Topeka to basically work. I think Topeka is the capital of Kansas. All right, so this is Jason Jones, and he is the dude who ran the Texas Rangers for 16 years. Also dealt with the state of Texas's international crimes, and now he is attempting to bring. He's private now. He's he's on his own, and he's attempting as an as a journalist to bring light to the situation on the border which i never cared about until it escalated to 10 times what it used to be so the amount of hype and concern that people gave it when they needed to in the past has now been dwarfed by the number of people that are coming across and uh there's no solutions here but there's awareness so listen to this oh here i'll take this off Ladies and gentlemen, I want to take a minute to congratulate and thank the men and women of the Federal Bureau of Investigation and Sedano Forces in Mexico. Now, I know that may surprise you as I don't praise the FBI for those of you who've been following me for a long time. Usually I'm criticizing them. But today, when you do right, they deserve it. This is great work. After last night, they conducted a successful operation through intelligence sharing from the United States, working with the government of Mexico exactly the way it's supposed to be done. They were able to take into custody Huevo, also known as Egghead, the head of Cartel del Noreste, also known as the Los Zetas, one of the most hyper-violent cartels in Mexico. Now, this is a huge win and a huge success, both tactically and strategically. Today, you don't go after the bosses just to go after them. You go after what we call keynotes based on the type of dark network that they are. And for this cartel, this is a huge, huge win for a multitude of reasons. Here's the thing, though. This is also a very technical operation. You see, the city of Northern Rio is controlled and protected by this cartel to a degree that I don't even have time here to articulate, but I can tell you this. They have roving QRF equipped response forces throughout the city, along with the Hopwell networks, that makes it very, very difficult. At one point, I would have said virtually impossible to get in there and get someone without watching the whole city erupt in violence, killing a lot of innocent civilians. And they were able to achieve that last night. And some of the images that you're seeing here, this is just roadblocks of what the cartel and these QRF teams try to do to prevent the escape or the, the uh, individual who was apprehended to be removed or from forces coming in as they're going after one of the high values. This is a common thing that you're seeing here right now. 
But last night, they were able to actually get him into custody. So again, I want to congratulate everyone, and I want to say one thing. This is how we win. We've got to go after these cartels because one thing I can tell you is somebody that did this for many years, what they don't handle well is constant pressure. Now it's time to pour it on and keep going. So to both the government of Mexico and to the FBI and other agencies that supported this operation, congratulations. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I want to take a minute to congratulate. You don't really get good news very often, and nobody pays attention to anything unless it's dire and you know they can complain about it. So uh, it's interesting. So um, did a little investigation after this, after hearing this one about that situation. And uh, this was from four days ago. Since then, all kinds of violence has erupted. And, um, you know, the consequences of uh, taking out uh, somebody at the top level or whatever um, of the cartels. But if it's interesting, I also just went back and listened to this guy on mic drop. Uh, that interview he did on Mic Drop from 2019. So it definitely would be interesting to have this guy on as a follow-up or something to get a, an idea of where his head's at or where he, where he thinks we're going or where we're at with all the new, with the situation we've got now. All right, so we mentioned the Connecticut Citizens Defense League had that kind of get together for people that want to eat free pizza and bring their own desserts. And then I guess do testimonies or whatever. And uh, this was what I guess happened. So these are all the people, some of the people, I don't know if that's everybody, but that's the people who are there at 2 a.m. And I can remember each one of these testimonies. So that was pretty cool. This is that another one from three days ago. And this is that same guy. So they call him Wavo in the other video, but in this video, they call him nuts, you know, left nut. So kind of depends what you want to call him. But uh, it says Sunday led to several attacks on buildings, including the U.S. consulate and blockades on roads. Um, he's now waiting for extradition. And then I seen something earlier that he's getting extradited. The other thing that's neat when you watch these videos is the direction of the EOTEX on their uh, guns because they're not consistent, which means that I don't know what they're doing. So, like, look at how many guns that guy's got on. Like, some of this stuff is, you know, made fun of by the memes or whatever, but it's also interesting to just watch, gather awareness by some of these uh uh, stories that aren't coming from the main news. I don't know where, you know, a lot of these are just coming from people's cell phones and stuff, I think. Uh, open source defense is a one of the newer Pro 2A, I think, two uh, organizations. And uh, this one says, our gun rights, the status quo. As 2A updates tweeted, the population in constitutional carry states has eclipsed that of May issue ones. Alabama and Ohio became the 22nd and 23rd states to remove their carry permit requirements. We take the idea of the status quo for granted in some ways. The idea that you'd need a permit to start a Twitter account or a permit to be free of police searches for your home, to us, those ideas seem ludicrous. But if you step outside that, you realize it's just the status quo. It's assumed. That's where we are trying to head with gun rights. It's just assumed. Given that the U.S. is probably the most diverse place on the planet, we will never hit 100%, but hey, shoot for the stars. Read more in the bio and dream big. Shoot for the stars figuratively, of course. So I think that was pretty neat. So I haven't read the article, but uh, I like the idea that people are coming to the fight with different approaches and with different tactics. And uh, I like that one. This one is from AZ Guns, a shop that is expanding. I follow pretty much all the gun shops that I'm aware of. So I've been to most of the gun shops in Arizona. And then shops that are garbage, I don't acknowledge. Shops that are exploiting situations, like to maybe hang out with gun buybacks or, you know, just are continually a black eye to the community. Pay attention to them. But shops that are 
doing good stuff that participate in the community and that are growing usually people grow either because they're completely taking advantage of their customers or the opposite they're catering to their customers and offer them exactly what they're looking for and uh, get more and more customers because of it and this is one of those examples a shop that's i've been following now for a while long year, years now and uh, I haven't been to all their locations anymore. I used to have been able to say I've been to their shop as it moved around. It's kind of about, it's most, it's in Phoenix. They're going to tell you it's not in Phoenix, but it's in Phoenix. And uh, if you remember Matt's chat, it's where Heavy and Angry lived. But uh, I don't think they ever went there. But uh, it's an army dude, so he's legit. And I like their Twitter, or not their Twitter, their Instagram. And uh, anyway, they had a ladies' night for i don't know why i think they just do them every once in a while i was a competition shooter out of phoenix who's got a who's a, um got a instagram feed as well ursula 308 and just a cool picture like showing a bunch of people showing up for some free training uh kind of like a stop the bleed i suspect i'm guessing now that everybody hates the nra some sort of non-nra version of um Women on Target, which used to be the NRA's version of doing this back in the days before everybody started hating the NRA. I think they still do Women on Target, actually. Uh, this one's pretty awesome. I'll let you read it while I drink some of this hot chocolate. I thought that was pretty awesome. This is from a gun shop in Illinois that's pretty awesome. If you ever go up there, I would definitely recommend you check it out. Oh, that was it. I think no, it isn't. Then we got RTAC posted this one. I don't post guns very often, but this one is pretty neat. Something about that grip. I'm guessing it's dipped, right? But uh, maybe it's had some kind of application done to it. But either way, I think that's just a uh, an inexpensive 22, right? Probably a rough. What are those things called? Heritages or something similar. But it's got a bunch of stuff and doohickeys on it, and it just looks kind of cool. A uh, good picture of it, so put that in there. And the last one is Banshee talking shit about Amadi. So what's up with that? First off, he didn't even thread the barrel. He still got a barrel nut. So uh, I think. So that's telling us he either has a threaded barrel and he's a scared to knock the, th the weld off and get it, or he's a scared to just thread it. And he's got the original Mahdi Wood. I mean, that's a cool gun. I don't know what he's complaining about. So I asked him. He hasn't said nothing. But this is crazy. A Mahdi is, for many reasons, one of the coolest guns. Just in a nutshell, Russia invented the AK-47 and then created an AKM, which is a folded sheet metal version of the AK-47. And then they started forcing all their countries that they owned to start making them. Germany was like yes sir let me make that for you right away sir and then they made the german akms and they were originally made on Ger on russian equipment that was given to germany and germany's like hey we'll make this gun but your equipment is nowhere near precise enough and it doesn't have enough parts for us so we have to make this more complicated first so we're going to take that russian equipment you gave us to get started and we're going to give it to egypt and they're going to use it. And now Egypt has this Russian equipment that was given to Germany and used in Germany. Wow, that's got to be amazing. Who wouldn't want a gun folded on Russian equipment that's already lived in Germany? And German guns were built on it. And now Mahdi guns are built on it. But wait, there's more. If you ever watch Charlie Wilson's War and the whole Mujahideen or whatever they're called. Wait, Mujahideen, whatever they're called. The people that we were helping to thwart the commie invasion into Afghanistan back in the day. We needed to give them AKs that didn't have a bunch of Russian marting on them because we were having them shoot at Russians, right? So instead of stealing guns from the Russians, we just went to Mahdi and said, hey, make us a bunch of guns. And then the CIA sold them to Israel and then they sold them to Afghanistan. No big deal. Oh, who wouldn't want guns built on that equipment? Well, there's one of them right there. Oh, wait, there's more. Those are the guns that were turned into full auto pre-86 in 1984 for the movie Red Dawn. And if Milius wouldn't have made those 13 or 15 AKs, you wouldn't have them in 
in a team or any other tv show that ever had an 8k based on those ones that he made for red dawn out of that same Mahdi right there this Mahdi could be one of the Mahdi's that was a sequentially numbered neighbor to the Mahdi's that were in red dawn that is the one of the coolest pieces of weird ak history you could own with more prominence than almost any other ak in the country and he says that this is what makes him hate AKs. And that's why people go to me. Well, how come you don't talk about AKs with people? Because people are freaking nuts, man. They don't even know. If you don't know what you don't know and you don't know, you start to hate things that are some of the coolest things you could even get your hands on in this country. The only thing cooler than this literally would be like a bring back from Nam. But you can't get anything closer to being a uh, real authentic Russian AK. I don't even know where the metal's from. That's a whole nother story but uh whatever that's where we'll end it today and we'll see if anything else is going on santee's out there i didn't include santee this week but santee's constantly doing stuff follow that channel you can just click on the little three dots and say jump over to the channel and subscribe um now i do think that banshee is regifting this I, I didn't read the whole thing but i do believe he's given that away because he hates it so much so maybe you can get regifted to you. Gun metal guy, you could get it maybe. Uh, let's see, we got Woods out there. I don't think anybody is saying anything else though. So with that, I think I'm quirking. Well, I'm not quirking. I am just running a little long, but I'm sure I'm being after quirked by Gizzard. It's sort of like at the top of the hour, I feel as though a chicken comes in and lands somewhere near here, like on my head or above me on a ceiling rafter or something i'm just waiting for an egg to fall so with that we'll uh, wrap it up and encourage you to head over to the gear website store buy stuff that's always fun um i think that was everything over here check out all the cool stuff that's in the description of the video and we'll be back to pick you up later oh wait what do we got guys there today You've got Caliber Corner. Wait, does he still do it in the morning? I think he still does in the morning. You've got uh, the Ask Gun Questions tomorrow at... Oh, crap. I don't know what time it is for y'all. It'll be at noontime, my time. And then uh, G23. Is this the week that you got Mike on from Walk, from, uh, Walk Talk America? Where's he at? Santee goes live all the time. I don't even know. And then we mentioned Brooke, who will go live with Suicide Prevention Saturday. Then you've got uh, Barbecue, who may or may not still be out here, goes live with a meat show. And I think that's everything on Saturday. Oh, no. Locked and Loaded might be on Saturday. Okay. One of these days I'll get it right, and then I'll be, actually get it right. But uh, G23 often has people on. Uh, talking about 2A and stuff. And yeah, let us know in the comments what you think. We'll be back to pick you up later. Thank you. So let us know what you think. We'll be watching the comments wherever you find the video over on gunstreamer.com or on guntube.org. Thank you for supporting our projects. If you'd like to buy us a cup of coffee, check out our Patreon channel. The, the guys and gals of gunwebsites.com encourages you to take a CCW class every year practice at least once a month, and carry every day. Thank you for watching GunWebsites.com. GunWebsites.com is your source for firearms-based playing cards and books. We also have mugs, shirts, and posters with designs that we've made live. Of course, we have patches. Every Friday is free patch Friday. We appreciate your support. Thank you for shopping at GearWebsites.com.